Hey y'all, welcome back to Squatch TV. On this episode, we're gonna see how fast of a video I can make. <laughs> we know that ain't happening. Uh, so my buddy, Jeremy Tellisbo, made some uh, roast beef here last week, week before, something like that. And I thought, that looks pretty good. I better get on that. So went and picked me up an eye around roast, about eight pounds, seven and a half pounds, right? So all we're gonna do is take it out of this. We're gonna cut every inch of fat and silver skin off of this. You don't need to see that, right? And then I'm gonna put it in the smoke, right? I'm gonna run it at 170 degrees until I get to an internal temperature of about 115, 110, 115. And then I'm gonna take it off the smoke, sear it in a super hot cast iron or maybe in my other grill, uh, sear it real good, and then let it rest and then we'll slice it up and then we're gonna have, me and the missus are gonna have French dips for supper. So, sounded pretty good to me. So, I'll, uh, geez, we're a minute and a half. So far it's the quickest video ever, right? This is a super easy way to make roast beef. Uh, nice, well, you can slice it as thin or as thick as you like. We're gonna take it to medium rare, but like I said, we'll get it up to about 110, 115, sear it at about 500 or more, and then uh, tent it and foil, let it rest for half hour. I'm gonna let it cool down completely, probably put it back in the fridge, and then it'll slice real nice, you know what I mean? So. Heat it back up with your au jus. I'm just using, I picked up, I stopped by the store and picked up some Stubbs beef rub is all I'm gonna put on there. And then I got some of that Johnny's uh, powdered au jus for our sandwiches tonight. And I might add just a little bit of, uh, I have Worcestershire powder. Actually, I'll just add Worcestershire to the roast before I put this on it as a binder. That'll work. So anyway, I'll bring you back. So I'm sitting here watching proof, proof and proofreading, editing, whatever you want to call it, my videos. And uh, I'm not sure if it was Jeremy Tellisbo that gave me the idea or Ben Felger. <laughs> For some reason, maybe you both did it. Maybe both of you guys did uh, roast beef. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, thanks to both of you. And if you didn't do it, I'll just take the thanks and run with it. I would. <laughs> All right. All right, there you go. So it's nice and trimmed up now. Right? That's good enough for me. We'll take a little bit of... A uh, little bit of Worcestershire. Get it down there. And then we'll take some of that beef rub that I just got. And we'll hit that on there. I go a little bit thick. Beef can take a lot of seasoning, no problem. Okay, that looks pretty good. Don't forget your sides. Pretty basic. This is a super easy recipe. And if you like French dips, this is the way to go for sure. Think I used enough seasoning? <laughs> Never enough. 
never enough. Okay, so I finished with that. Right, looks good. Throw her on the grill, get my last coat on. All right. Okay, I got the grill started up. I got a couple of tubes going in there too for a little extra smoke. We'll take that roast and we'll put the side that I just seasoned. I'll throw it down there on that top rack and then I'll take some more seasoning. Hit that top real nice, right? And then take yourself a temperature probe or two. I'll use two, try to get it right down in the middle. And that works fine. Get her up to about 115 and then we're gonna sear it off. All right. Okay, y'all, we're at uh, 115 and 117 right she's looking great looks good so when I take that out and put it onto my sear station I'm going to put my pan that I'm going to rest it in I'm going to turn the smoker off and I'm just going to set it in there to get warm while I'm searing it off uh, so I got this up to 225 which should put me right around 600 degrees at the grate. <laughs> 650, 660, so that's about perfect. All right, so, hold on. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna turn the smoker off and we're gonna warm this up while we're searing off the roast. So we'll turn this guy off. We're gonna start it anyway. We gotta pull the temperature probes out. Okay, sorry about that. We had a little hitch in our giddy up. So there's our roast. We'll take that out. And we'll put our plate in there to stay warm. And I'm gonna open this guy. Now remember, this thing is super hot. Too hot to be touching with your bare hand. So that's where your kitchen ready gloves come in handy, right? Because those things work awesome. So we'll take the lid off of my pizza oven. We'll give it a little canola oil. And put that guy on there. I'll put the pizza oven back on. And then we'll just let that guy sear. Now it was up to like 118, I think. So we want to let it sear until we're 125, 130. So I'm going to go about a minute each side. Then I'll turn it. And then when I turn it for the third time, because you know you're going to have four times to get all sides, I'll start. I'll start checking it with my stick thermometer. Make sure we don't get too high. I mean. It's roast beef, you know, for French dips. You could even go 140, 145. It's going to be thin sliced and it'll be fine. So uh, we'll bring you back uh, when we're back inside. All right. Okay, so now we'll give it a flip. I'm just going to grab it. Flip it like so. In there a little bit. Then we can take our probe and see what kind of temp we're at. 121. So we're doing good. Getting some sear marks on there. Keeping that nice and hot. And uh, yeah, doing good. So I'll just keep doing that. I'll sear all four sides. And then uh, I'll put it in that pan that we have heating up. And we'll be slicing here in a little bit. Woohoo! Okay, y'all, we're ready to rest this thing. I got a, about 125 right in the middle, about 130 on the ends. So that's about as good as I'm going to get. So we'll take our tray out of there. It's still somewhat warm. And we'll 
get our roast out of there. See what our nice bark that searing does? Does a great job. So I'm just gonna set that roast in there. Gently put the foil over the top and I'll set it inside before I turn you off. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to uh, discuss real quick is the thermometer. So I've been using the same ink bird now for a couple of years, right? But I take care of it. It's always in a nice case. And then when I'm done using the probes, see how clean it comes? I just take a, uh, oh, what's it called? Not, not Brillo pad, uh, a little green pad, uh, Scotch-Brite. Just, just a little bit of dampness to it because you don't want to get these things wet. I've heard people have problems with them getting wet. So I just get a little bit of dampness on the Scotch-Brite, clean it all up. And then I always uh, wrap it like this, right? And then I take a little band of some sorts, band it up like that. I charged it while it was cooking, so it's good to go. Bam, ready for the next cook. So. There you go, just wanted to show you that real quick. Get you some more life out of your thermometers. That ink bird, I'm telling you, I beat the hell out of that thing. So many cooks, so many cooks. I know I'm over 100, I, I did a video on the 100th cook. Uh, and it just keeps on holding up, so. Yeah, I know there's uh, more expensive thermometers out there and better equipment, but this thing is a champ, so. Uh, anyway. I'll bring you back when we're slicing and putting together our sandwiches. Okay, y'all, here we go. We're going to start putting stuff together. So I already pre-cooked our... We're having French fries. I haven't had a French fry in I don't know how long. We're having French fries, so I thought I'd take them out. We'll take the foil off of the roast, put it over the French fries so that they stay warm. Nobody likes a cold french fry, right? <clears throat> okay, so there's our french fries. I have our au jus going at a decent clip there. It's plenty warm. What my plan is is to take the roast, slice it up, dip it in the au jus, and then build the sandwich. Should go fairly quick. So what I got here, I got the roast, right? So I'll bring it closer. Doesn't that look fantastic? Okay, so we'll throw that down there. And you don't want to get rid of that. That came right out of the roast. So that'll go right back into our au jus. That'll make that au jus just fantastic. Okay, I'm running out of place to put stuff. I never thought I'd want a bigger kitchen, but imagine that. Okay, so let's see what the center of this guy looks like, shall we? We'll just go right after it. And there you go. It's beautiful. Yes, it's going to be fantastic. So, you can use a knife to cut thin slices, right? That's pretty thin. Or, we can use... My little cheap slicer. We'll see how we can do with this guy. Pretty good. So let me cut a little bit off here and I'll show you how we're gonna build these sandwiches. Look how nice that's looking. Isn't that great? Okay. 
So we got some meat. Now Aaron can come around the corner with the camera. So what we're gonna do from here is take my gloves off. So we're gonna dirty it up. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna give the old lady the Rona. You want the Rona, honey? No. No, no Rona. No Rona, okay. There's our au jus, right? Take your meat, stick her right in there. Except for maybe one of them pieces. That's pretty good. Did you get that on camera? I am. You're not much of a camera woman, I'm are you? Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we got. I put that one in there too. So that helps get it nice and hot too, right? So what we're gonna do. We'll just start laying out like a so, right? And if you got a little bit of extra juice, that's okay. It soaks into that bread. It makes the sandwich even better. Some places do that on purpose. They dip the whole sandwich into the au jus and then pull it back out. Uh, restaurants. Okay, I got the uh, oven on broil. After I took the fries out, I flipped it over to broil. Boy, that's a lot of meat, isn't it? I better give you another piece or you'll feel left out, huh? <laughs> okay, there's our meat. We got some of uh, mozzarella cheese here. And we'll go at least two. You want two or three? Two's probably good. Two's good? Okay, well, three's better. <laughs> and then another one there. And another one there. And I hate to be the guy to tell you guys this, but thumbs have heartbeats. <laughs> okay. Potholder. Did you tell them that you cut your thumb? Yes. I tell them everything. They know everything about me, honey. They know everything about you. So that's it. It's just that easy. You throw it under the broiler, wait for that cheese to melt, right? Close the clamshell, cut it at a 45. Looks nice. Have a few French fries. Of course, we're going to dip our French fries in a couple of cups of Hutch's Hot. Why are we doing that? Why wouldn't you do that? Come on. You're asking the wrong question. Okay, y'all. Oh, look, you better get a close-up. Oh, it's starting to look pretty good in there. It's getting pretty melty. Gonna be good sandwiches. Hey, thanks for following along. Hopefully you got a tip or something. I'm gonna slice all this up and, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to eat it, I guess, right? What else are you gonna do? Have a wonderful Sunday night, and as always, an even better tomorrow. Squatch and Mrs. Squatch out.